Hey y'all, welcome to Sweet Tea and Butterflies. Today I've got a, um, I don't know what you would, a mashup of previous fall videos, um, DIY videos. So, grab you something cold to drink, your favorite snack, kick back, relax, and watch, and get some crafting inspiration. So, for this one, I'm doing a um, pumpkin door hanger, and I had used a wooden pumpkin um, cut out from Dollar Tree. Sorry, guys. A cat jumped up here and knocked everything down. Ugh. I've got a new, uh, a new fur baby. He's little, and he's cute, and he's obnoxious. But that's okay. He'll grow out of the obnoxious, I hope. Anyway, so I used one of the wooden um, pumpkins um, cutouts from Dollar Tree, and I used one of those um, tile things from Dollar Tree as well. Cut it to the shape, put it on there, um, painted it. And then I dry brushed over it to bring out the details of that tile. And um, I trimmed it with nautical rope. Wrapped the peduncle with twine. And now I'm just kind of scuffing up that metal word. Because I need it to be able to take paint. Paint doesn't stick as well to um, glass, metal, that kind of stuff. Um, my original thought was to use antique wax on it because I just kind of wanted it a brownish color. Ooh, I wanted it to look more like a rusted brownish. That didn't work. So, I switched gears and um, put some Mod Podge on here first. Let it dry and then I used some white chalk paint and painted it with that. Then I went over it. Um, and I think I used copper. The metallic copper. It's a folk, folk art. Woo! Okay, can't talk today either, evidently. But I'm going to let you just uh, kind of watch and see the rest of the process. Um, I also embellished it with florals and stuff um, up at the top. I did, I can't remember if I did two coats of the white on there, but I did do two coats of the copper on that word. And here I've got um, getting my florals together. And evidently I did not catch that the camera angle was not the best. This, uh, this particular project was done when me and Dee Dee went, uh, for one of our crafting weekends a couple years ago. And, uh, I had just started filming and starting to, to put stuff, um, on YouTube, or I was preparing by filming. So, it's a learning curve. These are some of my earliest recordings and as you can see through the year I have improved um, it's always one of the it, there's always a learning curve and there's always something new to learn and I'm I'm you know in a bunch of different collaboration uh, groups and whatnot and I've learned a ton from all of the creative um, men and women that I'm in collaborations with. I think that's one of the, the best parts of being in some of those collaborations is you, you don't feel so um, alone out there. Like it's just you and you're like treading water trying to figure it all out. These um, collab groups are absolutely wonderful. Um, all of the 
the creatives in, you know, in all of them I'm in are always ready to jump in, offer advice, um, tips, tricks, you know, all of it. So it, it's been a, it's been a blessing, um, to be included in a lot of these, uh, labs and, and whatnot. So anyway, um, as you can see, I did a bow, uh, I used the, uh, that ribbon with the truck full of pumpkins on it. If you know, if you've been around my channel enough, then you know that my dad used to restore old trucks. So I've got a soft spot in my heart for the old trucks and do quite a few crafts that have some element of the truck in it. And as you can see, I'm just putting the, the word on there. Now, I didn't put it on backwards. Um, I was filming with my, my camera, so, and using the front facing camera so I could see if it was still recording. Because, well, my kids love to text me or call me, um, when I'm filming and it cuts it off and then I don't notice that I'm sitting there doing it and not recording. All right, now, this is a, um, one of the projects, one of my favorites, actually. Um, I had thrifted this and got it at a yard sale, and I took the original, I, I kind of sanded off the original, um, graphic that was on there. Because it was kind of falling apart and getting kind of yucky looking. <clears throat> Pardon me. And I absolutely fell in love with these napkins when I saw them. This is my second time trying to do part of this project. This, this particular project has four pieces to it, um, but right now we're just working on this part of it. I'll, I'll go into the detail of the others um, when we get to it. But as you can see, it's another truck. This particular, that, that particular year that we were going... Um, and doing getaways for our craft weekends and whatnot. Um, I did, a, I, I think I did a lot of truck crafts. Um, I was probably channeling my dad without realizing it. Um, that happens. I just love the, the old trucks and different things you can find and, and do with, um, with them. So here you can see I'm taking and I'm wetting around the, the edge of the napkin, um, so that I can tear it because that helps it blend to the background better. It doesn't have that sharp, um, edge on it, that clean, sharp edge. So it helps it blend, uh, better when you decoupage it on. And then don't forget to separate your layers. I've done that a time or two. Thankfully, I was able to salvage projects that I did forget to separate. Um, but I didn't do that in this one. Just one of those, um, learning curves and, and mistakes that sometimes you have to make as a crafter to remember not to do it again. A lot of times I find that I've got, that I end up with happy 
mistakes. Um, you know, I'll, I'll forget to do something or add something, in, you know, the wrong way or something. And, and it turns out looking better than what I thought it was going to. So it ends up being a happy mistake. Not all of them are happy, but most of them are correctable. So I had just taken a layer of thin layer of Mod Podge, put it in that area that I painted, and I'm working my way from the middle out because this is a it, it's kind of flat on the the front, but it curves as you can see. So I worked my way from the middle out to try to reduce the amount of um, wrinkling and buckling of the napkin. And then just took and made sure I had my edges secured around there. And this is a long video, so as I sat there and edited and, and put all this together and whatnot, I was thinking, oh lord, now i got to talk for an hour and 19 minutes. Some days I can do that without a problem, other days not so much. We'll see if today's one of the days I can do it without a problem. If not, it's okay. I can leave you to watch in spots and I'm in here and there as I need to. So, this is the, the part of the project um, that is my second time trying to do this. Um, the first run of it, the first ones I made, the napkins just did not, I mean, no matter what I could what I did they kept bubbling up really bad it was awful um, and I don't know what the deal was it's possible because I, I, that was a few years ago that I did the first set it's possible that that might have been one of those oh hey dummy you forgot to separate your layers I don't know um, even trying to iron it didn't help it just made it bubble worse so I decided I'm going to take an, another stab at this. So. And I don't know why I switched to the little pumpkins and then back to this. I, I don't know what I was doing. Um, nothing ever. <clears throat> As crafters, we're often ooze squirrel and all over the place. Because we get inspired in the middle of doing something something enters our brain and we're like oh 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 we gotta try that can't tell you how many unfinished projects I have because I ooh squirreled I need to try to finish some of those projects but that's neither here nor there so here I'm um, taking and getting the, the napkins on these little wooden pumpkins. I've got three of these little wooden pumpkins. And I'm... The struggle is real there, y'all. That was before I... Um... Saw pointers from other crafters to use a little piece of painter's tape to help separate your napkin. So here, I'm just trying to get my layers separated. Now, I didn't make you watch me Mod Podge all three of these. The concept is the same on all of it. So, I took, um, and as you could see there, the those napkins had, like, the middle one was, like, the truck that says gather, and then, you know, as it's folded or whatever, there's other panels on that napkin that had some really pretty pumpkins and stuff on it. So that's what I did. Um, I used one napkin for this whole project. Um, two of the truck pieces, uh, panels, and then two of the pumpkin panels. And you can see here, I'm just trying to get it lined up on there just right. Just very gently smoothing it. I always like to kind of go from the middle out because that helps you smooth out any wrinkles or buckles that way um 
I mean, it's, you know, mod decoupaging. It's, it's a simple process, but sometimes there's a few learning curves there. Um, your napkins don't always lay down as nicely as you want them to, or, you know, like with the first attempt at this project, your, your napkins bubble up and whatnot. Um, it's just one of those things. Let's see, there's the, the, um, container. <clears throat> now I'm, am I sealing it? No, I'm not seeing. I decided to take some of those borders off of the napkins and just kind of add it down at the bottom and up at the top. I thought that that gave it just a nice um, focal look. And it kind of um, brings your eye into the middle of the the where the actual graphic is. It frames it out really well. <clears throat> My allergies have got the best of me today. So pardon me with the, the coughing and clearing of the throat. Let's see, I just taken a um, little bit at a time on, on these started with the middle and worked my way out on each side and then I just took my fingernail and um, lightly tore around the outside edge and it's important to do that while your Mod Podge is still wet if you're going to do that I was going to say, it looks like that's crooked, but it's sticking up. I hadn't put it down yet. I was sitting here looking at it thinking, wait a minute, how did I just now notice that that is all crooked at the bottom? But anyway, we would love for you to follow us on our social media accounts. We're on um, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok. We have our own um, social chat on our web uh, website as well for... Um, you know, exchanging ideas, sharing craft projects, that kind of thing. I will admit I have not been very active on there uh, lately. I've had a lot going on family-wise, and um, my kids are, are making extreme efforts that they usually normally don't make. Um, to, you know, do more family gatherings and, and whatnot. It, you know, previously, <clears throat> we seem to uh, be able to collectively all get together, you know, on the holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas for the most part. Um, Mother's Day, they always make an effort to, you know, for all of us to get together. Um, we've had some some bad news and you know and whatnot um so my kids are trying to keep me busy and also trying to you know have hit the realization that you know mom ain't going to be here forever we don't make enough time to to you know spend together so they've been uh very actively hey let's get together for a barbecue hey let's get together and go to dinner I am not complaining, not at all. I will choose my kids over everything, anytime. So that's where we're, uh, <laughs> I have not been very active on my socials and whatnot lately. Um, cause crafting is my therapy. So if I have a choice between being active on my socials and sitting down and crafting and making a video, I'm a craft. I've got to find a happy balance there for um, for all the aspects of my business. Because uh, we do have an Etsy shop. We have our own online store. I'm also on Go Imagine. 
and were also in a uh, painted tree in Franklin, Tennessee. So I wear all the hats and unfortunately I have not been putting on very many of those hats because I also have a full-time job. Um, so bear with me. I will find a happy medium and, and get on a good flow. Um, I've just got a lot of other outside stuff going on that um, I just don't have as many hours in the day to do everything, all the things that I need to do. Um, but I'm working on finding finding that that happy medium in there and, and figuring out how to effectively wear all the hats and get all the things done. So that's where I'm at. Anyway, as you can see here, I took in, um, I've got some of those little bittersweet flowers, some twine bows. Um, and what, oh, and some little acorns that I painted. You know what that, uh, I painted those, um, with Waverly's agave just to pull that blue from the truck and whatnot. My, uh, the tails on my bow did not want to cooperate on this one, so I had to kind of tack them down. But yeah, sometimes when you're when you're doing crafting projects like this, um, the you know the magic is in the details, but sometimes the details just need to be minimal, and that's how uh, that's where I went with these. I let the designs on the napkins be the primary focus, um, and just lightly embellished. Just took a, a few little pieces in there to add that that finishing touch. But the twine I was using was a it was a little it was a little bit thicker twine than what you get at Dollar Tree, and it kind of had a mind of its own. So I just took and kind of tacked. The, the tails to my bow where I wanted them. Just took a little dab of hot glue to get it. But see, such a pretty design. I just love, I love those napkins. I fell in love with them as soon as I saw them. <clears throat> and I'm, I mean, I'm not a traditional holiday color kind of gal usually. I mean, I like all the fall colors and everything, um, but um, it's taken till, I mean, it's taken me this long to, to have any kind of appreciation for orange. Um, my high school colors were orange and black, and I just got to where I hated orange. <clears throat> so, I'm just now getting to the point where I have a little bit more appreciation for the orange um, and, and whatnot from fall and the fall colors and everything. But like I said, I'm not a traditional um, seasonal and holiday color kind of gal. Um, you know, my Christmas, my Christmas, uh, you know, from at my house when I set up a Christmas tree and whatnot. My Christmas is Mardi Gras colors. I'm a purple, green, and gold kind of gal. Um, when it comes to that kind of thing, I always have been. But I do appreciate the traditional colors as well. Um, same with fall. You know, I mean, typically the fall colors have been browns, oranges, yellows, some reds and whatnot. And now you're finding um, a lot of different, um, you know, like these leaves that are a dusk, uh, dusky blue. Um, 
there's, you know, Dollar Tree has had like some um, lavendery purple leaves, fall leaves and stuff um, over the years. So I've got to have a little bit of color in my in my decor. And we do, we do a lot of farmhouse, southern style, you know, kind of vibe in our uh, crafting. But again, mine's still not even the traditional farmhouse. Um, you know, I've got to have color. That's just me. I've got to have some kind of color in there. And let me tell you, I have toned down my neat color from my younger years. I used to have some some of the outfits I used to wear. Mm. Yeah. The 80s, you know, called and they want their clothes back. <laughs> I'm lost in the 80s. But I had I had a pair of pants that had like big splotches of different colors all over them and I, I mean I was my my clothing was loud and proud when I was growing up. Um, so I've toned it down a lot. You know, I, I appreciate the more muted colors and stuff now, like the leaves in this, um, in this arrangement that I'm making. But you'll still see occasionally, um, where I've got more bold colors or whatever. And here I just kind of adjusted the angle where you could see a little bit better. But I just love those sunflowers. They they just give me a rustic uh, rustic kind of vibe, you know. They um they just kind of look old and rustic looking. Um, every time I see them at the at Hobby Lobby when I when I'm at Hobby Lobby or whatever. I always pick up another bunch of them or two because uh, they just, I don't know, there's something about the sunflowers. They're just adorable. Now I do have, um, I do have the previous project and this set listed in my Etsy shop, my Go Imagine shop, and uh, on my website. I think all of the projects, and almost all of the projects in here I do have listed um, for sale in, in, in all three of my sales platforms. This one was a custom order. Um, a friend of Dee Dee's saw the, I had made a Halloween truck. Did I make a, was it the Halloween one that she sent her a picture of or the Apple truck? I don't know, but she's like, Ooh, I want one. that's like a dark shimmery red, um, with pumpkins in the back. I was like, Oh, I can do that. No problem. That that's doable. So these little, um, these little trucks, Dee Dee got these at, at Dollar Tree. Um, I think I've got maybe one or two left. Dee Dee can't go into a Dollar Tree and buy just one or two things. And I'm talking just one or two of, you know, like these trucks, for instance. I think she bought, there, there were two different styles. I think she bought at least four of each style. Um, but in her defense with that one, she knew I'd use them. I haven't used them all yet. I might use the last couple this fall or Christmas, but <clears throat> she, uh, she's working on getting better. Um, about not buying a ton of one thing. Um, if you go into a Dollar Tree here in Murfrees, you know, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and you can't find, because 
somebody's bought up all of one particular thing. It was probably her. Although she's getting better, she's working on it. But, as any of you probably know, if you see it in the Dollar Tree, you need to grab it while you see it, because you may never see it again. That's just the way it is. Or you may have to wait till the next year for, um, for it to come out if it's a seasonal thing. It's just one of those things. Um, so that's part of the reason why she grabs like a ton of, ton of stuff. Um, when she buy, you know, goes in and finds something. But quite frankly, I have we have a stash. I have a whole building that is full. It's a ten by. 10 by 20? No. Maybe an 8 by 10. I don't know. Decent sized barn building. That is full from top to bottom, front to back of craft supplies. I could craft the rest of my life. And not need to walk into another, buy another craft supply. Now, do I still buy? Yes, I do, because sometimes I don't have, you know, with all the stuff that we do have in there, I'm missing some, you know, little embellishing things or, or whatever. Um, so I'm, I'm doing my best to craft my stash this year and next year and probably the rest of my life, you know, because <laughs> I got way too much stuff. And then I got, you know, all that stuff given to me from, um, from my son's friend too. So, I, I mean, I have more stash than I have room to put the stash. So, um, I try not to go in and, and buy anything specific, um, or any, you know, any more craft supplies. Now I will go in, um. You know, like with these, these bursting canvases are huge. Um, and I thought those were really cute. So I did pick up a few of the canvases and whatnot so I could do some, uh, projects like that. Cause it's not something that we did have in our stash. And okay, as you can see here, I took and, um, cut down a jumbo craft stick to put in the back of the, the truck for somewhere for the pumpkins to set. But yeah, I'll pick up certain, if there's a specific project I have in mind, I'll still go shop and buy what I, I need for it if I don't have it in my stash. But, um, for the most part, I am, uh, definitely working on crafting my stash this year. And I'm just putting a couple of these cute little farmhousey pumpkins in the back of this. And I was going to use a couple of those, but those little tiny pumpkins on a stick. Um, but it just, it was too much. So I'll give my, uh, Spanish moss, a little haircut there, and voila, you have the finished uh, project there. And I'm looking at it and thinking, I should have made some stickers for the door. Such is life. All right, now we're moving on to um, our apple um, set. I don't know if I didn't record when I did the... I may not have been recording when I made the truck. Um, I, you know, I mean, I, I missed, I'm missing some footage for all of this. But I pieced together what I could here. So, um, 
I made like a tear tray set with apples and I did some red apples and some green apples. Um, the, those bigger apples there that I'm doing, um, I used to make garlands. <clears throat> and I was, this first green apple I just painted with some regular green paint. Um, I wasn't happy with it. I felt like it needed something else. So I mixed some color change green in there with some yellow um, and came up with this color. And you can see just a slight difference in the shade there. But what you can't see on the camera is the really pretty shimmer that that uh, color change paint that I used um, gave it. And I, I got me painting the apples for the garlands, but somehow I did not get me be, um, I didn't film me putting the garlands together. So it is what it is. So I painted several of these little wooden apples as well, um, with green and red. Um, and you'll see what I'm going to do with those little apples in a minute. Some of them went in the back of my apple truck. And then some of them, um, went in the next project. But I kept seeing, um, I kept seeing other crafters in videos use those little wooden apples and drove me crazy. I could not find them at any of our Dollar Trees, uh, when I was looking for them. That's another one of those things at Dollar Tree that as soon as the season hits and they're out, you better get them because they're going to be gone. All right. So here I'm kind of working on. The next part of the project. Now, I took one of those salt, uh, you know, the little mason jar salt and pepper shaker things. Um, I took a lid from one of those and painted it um, to look like wood. I did switch this up, as you'll see toward the end, but um, I did not film me doing it on what I did it on. So, I'm using this part of it to show you the concept. I split um, a bunch of the clothespins and I'm kind of gluing them around that, that lid and I'm using that to get like a curve on there. If you can't tell, I'm making an apple barrel. But this, um, this little lid was just it was too small um, for what I was trying to do. Oh, and you saw the little thing pop up there. You know, I invite y'all, if you like what the content that I that I put out, um, I invite you to like, comment, subscribe, share. Um, all of it helps my channel grow and helps push my videos out to other people that might be interested in some of the projects I make. But as you can see here, I'm just taking in one piece at a time and, and kind of using that, that lid and I couldn't get it to stick to the lid. I think that was one of my big problems too, was part of why I switched over to something different, but too, it was too small. It was, um, wasn't as big around as I wanted it to be. But at least in this, you see the concept of how I, what I was doing and how I was doing it. But I just could not keep that lid in there. I took and, and glued you know, tried to glue it on there and it just wouldn't stay. 
Um, no matter what I did, it would not stay, and I and it was smaller in diameter than what I wanted. So, but you saw the concept there. Here's the one that I actually went with, and you can see I used the bigger wood round in the bottom. <laughs> Just one of the um, the log slices, and then um, I took some jute twine, wrapped it, you know, glued it around. And then I just kind of went in there and dumped a bunch of hot glue to make sure that it was not going anywhere. And then took some of the Waverly Antique Wax and painted the top section inside. You won't see down in the barrel. So I just did the area that you might see. And then... Um, Use the antique wax all the way around it to stain it. I think as I'm painting, I'm finding, um, I kept finding a couple areas that needed a little bit of reinforcement with the glue. Okay, so now I'm taking, and I just stuffed some, uh, newspaper in there. So I didn't have to use a ton of the Spanish moss to, to fill that empty space. And now I'm just placing all my little apples. kind of laying them on there at first to kind of get an idea and then going through and gluing them in place I was trying not to have a symmetrical you know line of red line of green but no matter what I did I ended up with a line of red and a line of green I was just like okay I'll just go with it we'll just go with it the way it is no biggie but I just thought uh, I thought those little apples were just adorable, and I just had to do something with them. Um, so, here is one of my takes with those little mini wooden apples. The final reveal shows, I think I've got the whole set showing in the, the final reveal. <clears throat> but I made... Um, I think I made two green apple garlands and two red apple garlands. I don't know why I did two of each of those. Um, I have no idea what I was thinking. Because I didn't do two barrels or two trucks. I guess I've got some extra um, apple garlands if somebody just wanted to purchase a apple garland instead of the whole set. I don't know. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to me even what I'm doing, so, or why I did something. And there's the whole set. It's got one of each of the garlands, the truck, and the little apple barrel. And you can see I threw some more apples on top of there to kind of break up that um, symmetrical and there's our little apple garlands. All right, so now we're on to the next one. Um, as y'all probably know, I do a lot of crafting with my granddaughters. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to craft with them as much the last year or so as I used to. I hope to be able to get back to doing more crafting with them. This, this is Addie. She is my youngest granddaughter. And she is just something else. Um, <laughs> she makes me giggle all the time. Uh, she is just... She is the type that when she talks, her whole body, face, everything is animated with what she is telling you. Um, she's so entertaining to watch. And it's... It's so hard not to giggle because she is just so cute. But, um, we like to do flower arrangements and stuff like that together. So I take and I let them pick out their flowers and their container and all of that. And then, um, we get, get in there, get busy and I'll cut the flowers off the stems. You know, I'll tell, 
I, I was telling her, all right, pick your next flower, you know, and I'll cut it off the stem and let her put it in there. Now I used, um, I had to help her with putting some of them in because, um, I had, I had used some of that, uh, spray insulation foam for a couple of Halloween projects. I had some left over and so I just made some blobs of them on a, on parchment paper that could be used as floral foam. Um, if any of you have used that spray foam insulation, then you know that once you start using it, if you don't empty the can, you're going to lose whatever's in the can. Um, so I did my projects that I was doing and had plenty left in the can. So I was like, oh, well, here, we'll just make some things for floral foam. So that's what I did. That's what I put in here, but it's, it can be a little more difficult to get the flower stems stuck in there sometimes. So she was struggling with some of it. Um, so I had to help her get it stuck in there and in a couple of spots. But she, uh, and any, and, and just so y'all know the um, their floral arrangements and everything that they make, they go up in our, our, um, stores as well. And any projects that they make with me, when they sell, they get some of the money from, um, from the sale too. But we've got, you know, Dee Dee and I, this is a very family oriented business. Um, Dee Dee and I are partners in it, but my granddaughters, um, craft with me and make projects to sell, um, on our, website and stuff too. Um, my second oldest son does woodworking. I've got a couple of his cutting boards in my shops. Um, and you know, he's, he, he's got the equipment to do the planing and all of that. Um, he can take a tree trunk, cut it down. You know, I mean, we're talking when you see his cutting boards in, in my shop. He made those from a tree trunk and, you know, did all the work to, to bring it down to, you know, the, the raw edge and he planed it, sanded it the whole nine yards, um, from a tree trunk. So when you see cutting boards in my shop that he has made, he has made them completely from scratch. You sh and if I'm not mistaken, from trees that he cut down in his own yard. So he doesn't even, you know, I mean, he's, he's really amazing that way with, with making stuff. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the, the projects that he makes are bigger projects. So it's, it's harder to do anything other than sell them locally. Um, shipping would just be murder on, he made, um, he made his girlfriend a porch swing out of the, with the same concept, wood from his, uh, from trees that he cut down in his backyard. He planed the wood down, he, you know, the whole nine yards. Wow. Completely from scratch. And that just amazes me that, you know that he's able to do that. Um, it's just a, a interesting process. Yeah, you can see she's now Addie, she's got kind of a shorter attention span. So as you can see, she's fidgeting now and she left me to kind of tweak the things around, but see, she's got to look in the camera and, <laughs> She's such a cutie pie, though. But, um, she left me to kind of tweak the, the stuff around there. That was about all her attention span could handle that day. 
Now, Avery, Avery can craft with me, you know, for hours. Addie, it's got to be a short project because her attention span, she's like, Whoop. all right, I'm ready to go do something else now. Um, but here's the finished uh, project there. Now, they took, um, they each picked the same bucket to do their floral arrangement in. But as you can see, Avery picked different flowers um, and leaves, different color scheme for hers. And this is Avery here. We're just uh, going through and she's doing her little bucket. And I think I'm just going to shut up for a few minutes and, and just let you watch the process. So, little Miss Avery has been crafting with me since she was about three years old. Um, me, her great-grandmother, and her grandfather had opened a brick-and-mortar for a while. And um, I would watch the girls while their parents were working. And... Um, you know, Addie at the time was, was just a little toddler, so, um, she couldn't really get in there and help craft or whatever, but Avery always wanted to jump in there and help with whatever I was doing. Um, she's always been that way. And, um, so she, you know, I was sitting there making a, I think I was making a lantern swag one day, and she was sitting there next to me, and I'm just arranging the flowers and trying to get it, find the, you know, find the combination that was pleasing. And she was like, oh, no, put that one there. Here, try this one, you know. And I realized that she, um, she definitely had an eye. Um, so it became one of those things. If, if I was making, um, if I was making jewelry or if I was making, you know, a floral arrangement, she would jump right in there um, with me. So, she's been crafting with me since she was about three. And, you know, I'm hoping that I can pass all of this down to them. Um, you know, create something that that um is sustainable that i can pass pass down um avery definitely has you know the love of of uh creating so i i hope that um someday i can pass all of this down to her and she can keep it going and there's avery's floral arrangement there Now this one here, um, I had the office, um, that I work in, I work in a law office and we're in a building, um, we rent office space in said building. Well, they have, you know, I, I did notice that they, that, um, Christmas, 
the office was decorated and, and whatnot for Christmas, you know, the building and whatnot. Um, but not so much for any other, you know, seasonal or holiday or, or anything like that. So I was like, you know what? There is no excuse for this office building not to be decked out each season or holiday or, or whatever with decorations. Um, most of the, we're on, we're, we're on the square, um, and most of the businesses at least fall through Christmas, um, do decorate and whatnot. Uh, not so much for spring and the, the other seasonal and holidays and stuff like that, but definitely Christmas and fall. So I decided, you know what, there is no excuse for not having any kind of wall decorations or, you know, whatever, um, in this building, I, you know, I, I make, I make home decor. Why do we not have any? So, um, I made this for our, when you first walk in the door, there's like this little half round table that's sitting underneath the marquee, um, that has all the, um, that has the office names and locations on it. So, um, I made, I decided I'm going to make that to put, you know, right there. So that's what I did. And the funny thing is when I first set it up at the office, um, I took a picture of it and didn't even, I mean, it didn't even occur to me. It, I don't know what I was thinking that day. I had set it up on there and, and snapped a picture. Um, and then realized when I made the original video here, um, that I had turned it around the wrong way, had it sitting up there. So my little scarecrow was facing the, the wall when I took the, the original picture. So when I set it back up last year, I had to take another picture. Um, and I couldn't find the, I thought I had taken a picture when, cause I did this one on one of our crafting weekends too. And I thought I had taken a picture and staged it while we were there. But I couldn't find it when I was trying to do the original video. And I found it this time. Um, so I included that photo too. But, you know, sometimes we just kind of get in a hurry of getting stuff done. And um, don't catch little mistakes like that. But I wanted to, this one I wanted to make sure, you know, had a good um variety of all the pretty fall colors and stuff in it so this one's got a good mix of fall colors in there it's got different colored leaves and flowers and um you know it's got that little pumpkin and a scarecrow um I just, I went to town on it. I was like, oh, let's throw this in here and that in there and that'll be pretty and, you know. Sometimes that's how our crafting brains work. We just keep throwing stuff in there. <laughs> it's like, oh, let's add this. Let's add that. Let's try this. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I did. And you can see the little scarecrow there. That's the proper picture. <laughs> And here, I, like I said, I found the picture, finally. So, on this one, um, I had seen the cutest um, idea for, like, a scarecrow head. Um, and when it came time to go back and find the video that I had seen the inspiration on, I thought I had saved it. <clears throat> but I save so many videos that I'm watching, you know, when I get inspiration and I'm like, Ooh, that's cute. I want to do my own twist on that or whatever. Um, 
So I could not find it. I could not find it anywhere to to credit the original, you know, that I got the inspiration from. Um, if I ever run across it as I'm going, you know, through videos or whatever, I will go back to any of the videos that this is in and put the link in the description box uh, for the, the creator that I got inspiration from. But um, this is using K-Cups. Um, I just thought it was the cutest idea. And then after, you know, after doing this, I was like, you know, we have a Keurig in the office and that's, that's the coffee that, you know, that we use in the office. I'm like, you know, I've got K-Cups for days because if you know anything about me, I drink coffee almost all day long. So I've got plenty of K-Cups. Um, so after I had done this, I was like, there's got to be some other things I can make with these K-Cups that I can do with these K-Cups. Um, and I've, I've come up with some other, you know, projects with them as well. And one of the collaborations, the Just Our Imagination collaboration, um, the very, the, the sec, the very first one that I joined in on, they had, um, they had voted for, you know, I had won that one to be the guest host. So the way they do that is Brenda and Kathy Joe each pick an I, a challenge item. And then whoever the, the winning crafter is for the next, you know, for the next co-host the following month gets to pick the next one, um, or gets to pick a, you know, the other, uh, must use challenge item. So I picked K cups. I don't think I was overly popular, <laughs> but then again, that's the way this, that's the way that challenge collab works. There's always at least one month, every month there's at least one uh, challenge item that, you know, makes the one that chose it not very popular. But we all do end up coming up with some interesting ideas out of um, some of those challenging challenge items. So I have a lot of fun with that. Um, it, it's just one, I like being challenged. I like coming up with different ideas and, and um, working outside the box sometimes. So, as you can see, I took in, um, I had to find something for the brim, you know, to, to trace around. So, you saw the process there where I'd taken that one, uh, it's basically a coaster, and drew the two circles for the, uh, for the brim of the hat and then use the K-cup in the middle to cut out the hole for the um, K-cup to go through. Now I made two of these but I'm only showing oddly I somehow am showing bits and pieces of each of them in here for one total finished one. Um, yeah don't ask me. I don't think I thought that through as I was, you know, but I made two of them and they're each a little different. Um, I used like the little wheat ribbon from Dollar Tree for the one. And then you can see this hat here has like little sunflowers on it. So each of my scarecrows, um, they each have different colored hair. Now see... I'm showing you the process of doing the hair with the darker colored hair. But then when I go to put the hat on and all of that, it's the one with the lighter colored hair. So the concept was the same either way. I'm just all over the place. That's nothing new. That too happens sometimes with crafting. But you can see I'm just kind of tacking. I, I wrapped it around, you know, that little poof there that's sticking up um, some. And then, you know, I just started kind of tacking it on there. Um, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do that process at first. It was just one of those things I 
just kind of went with it as as I was going. <clears throat> And it looks, it looks a mess right now. It is a hot mess. <laughs> but that's nothing new with crafting either. You get a lot of hot messes. Um, or at least what looks like a hot mess for a little while. And then, you know, you clean it up and, and it's not so hot messy. But see here, I've got. Now I'm putting the, I'm looking for the buttons for the eyes. Had a whole jar full of buttons there and was looking for some that were similar. Um, it's a scarecrow, so it didn't have to match perf, they didn't have to be perfectly matching buttons. Because usually scarecrows are put together out of stuff that you just kind of have laying around, right? Speaking of scarecrows, I'm going to have to get, uh, get my creative on for the, um, the scarecrow con contest. Um, the, all the businesses on the, the square in Murfreesboro in the fall, they have a scarecrow contest and you can enter and you display your scarecrow and they have like a QR code for people that are walking around the square can scan and vote. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to start working on what we're going to do for our scarecrow this year. Last year, I just kind of, last year, and the scarecrow I made last year, I didn't expect to, to win. It was not, it wasn't the greatest scarecrow, but it was, I did it to, to pick on the owner of the building. He's a prankster. Um, he likes to pick on us or, you know, like when I come in the office, sometimes he'll be hiding around the corner and he'll be like, boop. You know, so he, he's a bit of a prankster. And, um, the other paralegal had taken, he had, how, did she take the picture or did he take it and send it to her? He was doing something goofy, making a goofy face. So I took and had her send me that photo and I blew it up and stuck it on a, um, one of the Halloween buckets, the pumpkin things. I had stuck it on there and turned a scarecrow, or turned it into a scarecrow face, um, with him on it, just to pick on him. He come to work that morning and he's like, that's my face on there. <laughs> but I think I'm going to up my game this year and actually try to come up with something that, um, that is vote worthy. I did last year's just for fun, just to, to pick on him. Because he's, he's easy pickings. It's not as easy to, to, to startle him or get him like he does us. Um, you got to really work at it. So anytime I can get a little, uh, little thing in there on him, I do. Let's see, you can, it's coming together. Well, sounds like the neighborhood dogs are roaming. Some people around here, they don't keep their dogs pinned up and they like to chase kids on their bikes or cars or whatever. We hear them out there. Barking and carrying on. I get it though. My my outside dog. She outsmarts me with that fence. No matter what I do. She finds a way out of it. But here's a picture of both of the little. Uh, 
scarecrow heads. Now, I had taken little small wood rounds and glued them on there for the stand for them to be able, um, where you could set them up and they're not rolling all around, um, looking like just beheaded it and it's laying there, you know? Here's the, um, this is another one of those little trucks. That's the other style, um, that we had gotten. Like I said, I think she got four of each style. And she's over there making, um, a little faux pumpkin pie. I really want to get my stuff, my craft, um, cabin organized and set up where Dee Dee and I can start crafting together again. Um, Dee Dee gets inspired, um, sometimes and she'll, you know, at home by herself or whatever, and she'll just like, just knock out a, a zillion things. And then other times, if we're not crafting together, she has no inspiration to craft. Um, I, on the other hand, I always have inspiration to craft. I just don't have time to craft. I'm getting to where I make time to craft because that's also my therapy. Um, you know, if I'm having a, a rough day, rough week, or, you know, just a lot of things on my mind, sitting down and crafting just helps me center and it gives me something positive to focus on. And, you know, the feeling that you get when you finish and complete a project and it turns out the way you imagined it would, um, there's no better medicine than that. I mean, you know, so with this, uh, particular truck, I had used agave, Waverly's agave, and then I have a color shift paint, um, that's kind of a teal color shift and it's kind of translucent. I originally was just going to use the color shift paint and you probably saw there where I had started and then I was like, oop, nope, that's not going to work. Um, so I painted with the agave first and then put the color shift over it and it turned out amazing. And then, you know, Dee Dee, she's, she's doing one of those, she's doing a couple of those little faux pumpkin pies. Um, you can't really, uh, unfortunately with this angle where I was trying to get both of us crafting, it's harder to see exactly what we're doing with, with everything. Um, but hopefully once I get my craft cabin squared away where we can craft together again. Um, I'll find a better setup to do that. I may have to take and use both of our, our ring lights and clips. And, you know, the problem is that Dee Dee can't ever get me the, the video. If we use her phone to record what she's doing, trying to get the video from her, she's like, it won't send. I can't get it to do, you know, um, but that's okay. I I know how to hook it up to a computer and swipe it over. So, right now, though, um, we're not going to have my, my craft cabin figured out this year um, where we can craft together. I've got a, a friend that, um, that she's battling cancer, and she is, unfortunately, unable to go home. Um, she's got a drain in her back that needs to be in a very clean, you know, she's got to be in a very clean house and they have dogs. Her husband does outside, you know, construction, yard work, tree trimming. Um, so she's right, you know, right now they're paying for her to be in another cabin, sort of like mine. Um, each month until she's able to get that drain out. And I'm just like, there's no reason for you to pay $500 a month 
you know, so I'm trying to get it cleaned out so that she can move in there until she gets that drain removed. Um, but I'll get my cabin back eventually. But right now it has a different purpose, a more important purpose, and I'm okay with that. And I don't know why I had, I didn't rec I didn't notice that the angle <laughs> was not the greatest on the, on this part of it when I was recording this, these weekends, this was the first time that I started recording everything that we were doing so that I could start putting out content on YouTube. Um, and you know, any of you that, that, you know, put out content on YouTube like this, you know, you know, there's a learning curve. Your, your first videos probably were not the greatest. Um, and you know, that's just normal. Anytime you start something new, that's just a normal thing to, you know, you've got, um, you've got to learn, figure out what works best. A lot of trial and error. But as you can see, you can catch glimpses of it where Dee Dee had taken and, and done. Um, she used some of the lightweight spackling and made like a little dollop of whipped cream in the middle of that. And the, the crust was made from the, the uh, lace ribbon from Dollar Tree. Yeah, I, we just got, um, she put like a little, what did she do? Oh, she finished her pumpkin pie and now she's, she's working on, um, we've got a bunch of those little mugs, those little miniature mugs and stuff. And, um, I think you'll see that one. You'll see one of them in the final reveal, uh, where she had done like a, um, little sunflower mug with uh, whipped cream on top and with the the little sunflower truck I had made labels to put like a little sign on the side and I didn't measure them right when I made them now we were we had gone um, we were doing a craft getaway because my cabin was in use at that time too um, so I didn't have the printer with me where I could reprint it at the right size um so i just had to kind of trim it down and and fiddle with it until i got it how i needed it but that's also something that you know i've realized at that particular point that i could always if it didn't work once i got home i could reprint take the the one i put on there off and and put the proper one on but uh here are the finished projects there and there's the whole set that we did um, with sunflowers and here's the final reveal of all the projects got the little door hanger the gather uh, set a little uh, fall pumpkin truck Our apple sets. And then Addie's little uh, pale, flower pale. And Avery's little flower pale. And then the office. Um, Floral and then our the little scarecrows, the little pumpkin pie, and our sunflower set. Thanks for watching, y'all. Have a great day.